you know, in the book, you discuss overly optimistic goals and that, you know, many of us as leaders are uh, just, I guess, all together, we're very ambitious and sometimes optimistic on what a goal is that we can achieve. But where do you draw the line between optimism and what's truly unrealistic, right? Because you could argue that there's organizations like SpaceX and so on that have to set very optimistic goals uh, to, to make things happen. So I'm just curious as to like, how do you know when a goal is too optimistic? Uh, well, goals are usually optimistic, okay? and they are usually slightly optimistic, and this is good. Okay, like you'll have to work harder than you intended in order to meet that specific uh, target number. Uh, that also means that you know, if you said that you are going to finish your project by the end of the month, and you finish it like a few days uh, later. This is good. Like the the goal still worked in the sense that it still motivated you to uh, to work hard. Uh, when we know that uh, it's too ambitious, that it's too optimistic, that it's actually not the motivating optimism that led to setting the goal. It's pure planning fallacy. Okay, you, mm-hmm. you just didn't think about everything else that you needed to do. Uh, it's uh, uh, when there is really no chance. Okay, you, you set the target not realizing what is possible and, and what is uh, not possible. And uh, uh, when people give up as a result, okay, by the way, they either give up or that they find shortcuts. Okay, they will achieve the goal, but in, in the wrong way. Uh, a few years ago, uh, Wells Fargo got in, uh, uh, in, in trouble. You may have remembered that they had these great initiatives that involved selling eight financial products to every customer. And as it turned out, you really cannot do that unless you are selling customers products that they are unaware of and never sign up for. Okay, and if you see that employees need to use these shortcuts or that they are just, they're giving up, okay, that they are less motivated because they say, well, you know, it's nice that you've set a target, but there is no way I'm getting there. Uh, then you know that your target needs to be adjusted and it's perfectly fine to adjust your target. These targets are not set in stone. We design them so that they will motivate action. And and speaking of which, the, there's the topic of incentives and having like rewards that you know, for your efforts that can motivate you to stick to your goals. Um, when does having the right incentive structure make sense and when does it not work? Oh, there is so much work on incentives. There is work on incentives in uh, economics right? and, and you know, behavioral economics, uh, which is the, uh, the field between psychology and economics uh, has really looked at uh, the influence of incentives. Psychologists have been interested in incentives, you know, starting from the days when we were mainly uh, studying animals uh, running through the maze. Um, so incentives work. Uh, incentives often work best when they are uncertain, okay? uh, intermittent reinforcement in uh, uh, the, the old psycholog- psychological jargon uh, was effective, meaning if you only reward the behavior on some occasions and not always, okay? uh, uh, you know, if you work hard, you, you might get the bonus. You don't know whether you will get it and how much it's going to be that uh, keeps you uh, working hard. Uh, it's also exciting when uh, incentives are uh, uncertain, and so there is uh, a lot of work on how to make the incentives sufficiently uncertain, sufficiently unstable, so that people actually care about them, that they actually notice that uh, uh, there is a reward here that's different than the reward that I got before or what I anticipate to get in uh, uh, the future. Uh, and, and then there are all kind of tricks with the uh, uh, incentives. For example, thinking about whether to incentivize the group or the individual and how to best structure that. We should also be aware that incentives can seriously backfire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, in my book, I, I tell the story of uh, uh, the, uh, the Hanoi massacre uh, of rats. And this is uh, when uh, French colonists uh, back at the beginning of the 20th century uh, were trying to uh, get rid of the rats running the streets of Hanoi by um, having a bounty uh, program. So they paid one cent per uh, dead rat. And the result was uh, uh, that uh, the residents of Hanoi started breeding rats so that they can kill them and claim the money. So, you know, incentive system can be uh, tricky. <laughs> 